Well, 2020 sucked, and now we're rounding it out with hopes of a better year to come. However, if nothing else, 2020 saw the release of some incredible games from independent developers, and some AAA games too, I guess. If you watch the Game Awards like I did, first of all, I'm sorry. And secondly, you may be under the impression that no games of note happened this year apart from Last of Us. But under the surface of some terrible development conditions from companies with more than enough money to have prevented crunch, which if nothing else has sparked some excellent discussion in the world of game development, is a vein of games which deserve love. I'm not one for top 10 lists or whatever, and this selection is by no means complete. This is simply me pointing a spotlight on some games, in no particular order, that I absolutely adore which released in 2020. Big or small, indie or AAA, known or unknown, genres from all across the spectrum, all I wish to do is tip my cap to those which made the world a little more tolerable in 2020. Here's a small selection of excellent 2020 games. Let's start out strong with Hades. You've seen this game assuredly, either on this channel or otherwise. It's garnered plenty of attention for good reason. A single-player roguelite developed by Supergiant, the gameplay is only about half of what makes this title so strong. With a cast of Greek gods and immortals to talk to, get to know, fall in love with, and battle against, the narrative of Hades brings a title with good gameplay into the realm of Game of the Year deservedness. It's for sure up there in terms of difficulty, but in included accessibility mode allows for anyone to repeatedly escape from the underworld as you deem fit. If you're looking for something on the easier side, however... Going Under. Some, not all, of these games will be ones I've reviewed on my channel already, but I'm absolutely happy to get another chance to gush about Going Under. Another single-player roguelite with an excellent cast, but differing from Hades. Instead of actual hell, Going Under is set in the hell of failed tech startups. A bit of an easier game for first-time roguelite players to get into, with a narrative worth paying attention to the whole way through. Lovable characters, kick-ass music, and a striking aesthetic, combined with solid gameplay and weapon selection to create one of my personal favorite releases of 2020. Highly recommended for first-timers or roguelite veterans alike. Proteus. Stepping away from roguelites into the world of boomer shooters, this early access single-player FPS aims to capture all the fun of the Doom era of games without the hang-ups. Controls and level design are leagues better than shooters of the 90s, but Proteus still captures the atmosphere and the aesthetic flawlessly. The weapon selection is vast and entertaining, combat is punchy and fast-paced, and secrets are abound. The early access release is limited in terms of level selection, but for the price it's absolutely worth a shot. Shot. Speaking of shots... Umarangi Generation, another game I've already reviewed, and if I've made videos about any of these titles, I'll be sure to link them below. A single-player photography simulator with chill vibes, killer music, and an aesthetic so good that the pics you take will make for great shots outside of the game's context. If you're looking for a good game to wind down to, or to practice photography using different filters and lenses without needing to own any equipment, Umarangi will be your cup of tea. Townscaper. This game is tiny. I hesitate to even really call it a game. It's a cute little village building simulator. Click to make buildings, choose their color, watch as pieces automatically connect to form different structures. If you need something to distract yourself with zero pressure, or something to do with your hands while listening to music or a podcast, Townscaper is a nice little app to play around with. Think of it like Lego without needing to think too hard about it. Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon, a AAA release wasn't something I expected to put on this list, but after sinking 80 hours into Ichiban's story this year, it's not like I could just ignore it. A good entry point for those interested in the Yakuza series, Like a Dragon stars a new cast, rather than focusing on characters from the previous seven games. Rather than a brawler, this title takes the series in a new direction as a single-player turn-based RPG fully fleshed out. With lovable characters and shockingly moving character art, this game has all the ridiculousness and surprisingly refreshing commentary I've come to expect from this long-standing franchise. Not only that, but if you're into dubs, Yakuza Lad has full dual audio with some extreme talent lining the roster. If you've ever wondered what this wild Yakuza series people gush about is, this is your chance to take a taste for yourself.
Treachery in Beatdown City. Whilst Yakuza has gone from beat-em-up to a turn-based RPG, this excellent single-player indie title takes the extremely unique turn of doing both. Walk up to and dodge enemies like a classic 2D NES fighter, but choose your moves and create combos in a turn-based menu. With very stark and hilarious writing, an excellent understanding of the retro aesthetic, and a chance to beat up corrupt cops and politicians, Beatdown City is quite the unique take on both RPG and beat-em-ups alike. Highly recommended if you're a fan of one or both genres, and my full review has more info if you're interested. Ghost Runner. If you like the wall running and parkour mechanics of Titanfall 2 combined with the killer be killed toughness of titles like Hotline Miami, Ghost Runner might be up your alley. A cyberpunk aesthetic without the problematic BS, with tough as nails platforming and combat, dash around and strike enemies before they can shoot you first while you work your way through this gritty undercity to reach the surface. You'll probably die a lot and get frustrated like I did, but the satisfaction of finally clearing a room of enemies is worth the trip. Recommended to scratch that aesthetic and difficulty itch. Pedal Crash, Game Boy Color aesthetic with an original single or two-player puzzler to satisfy. Pedal Crash is absolutely adorable, while actually having quite a lot to say in its story. Pay attention to the dialogue as you blast through the story mode, sliding blocks to create matches and blasting other blocks away to create more matches. Once again, an entire review of this game is linked below, but rest assured if you're a fan of games like Puyo Puyo Tetris, you'll find something to love in Pedal Crash. Hard Space Shipbreaker, another early access gem here. It's really hard to pin a genre on this game. Single player capitalism simulator, I guess, where you play as a worker floating around in a space junkyard, tearing up decommissioned ships for loot. You're in debt to the company you're employed to, so you have to meet their quotas of certain materials and ship parts in the allotted time frame, all while paying for your own oxygen and equipment. The satisfaction in this title is from methodically working your way through metal and scrap, finding efficient ways to cut through and pull out parts which are worth the most. Going from a complete structure to segmented ships to nothing but leftover scrap to be thrown in the incinerator. I'm excited for this game's full release, but there's still plenty of satisfying destruction and accidental detonation to be had in Hard Space Shipbreaker. Paradise Killer. Guess que say? An open world single player murder mystery. You play as Lady Love Dies, wandering an island looking for clues and testimony to solve a slew of crimes. You traverse with parkour, discovering puzzles and lore around at your leisure, and gathering evidence to confront the killer at your own pace. A cast of lovable, well written characters make for interesting conversation and hangouts. With perhaps the most striking aesthetic of any game on my little list here, Paradise Killer is very much on the weirder side of this genre, and I'm absolutely here for it. There's no game quite like it. If you enjoy yourself a murder mystery and are looking for something new, Paradise Killer is perhaps the most unique one I've ever seen. Plus, loads of accessibility options to ensure as many people as possible get a chance to try. Highly recommended. Teardown, the last of my early access games here, this is a single-player destruction simulator heist game, where you plan out robberies of various houses, abandoned lots, or towns, using guns, explosives, sledgehammers, and drivable vehicles to destroy the terrain to create an escape route for yourself when you begin the heist. The second you grab one of the valuables, you'll start a timer to escape before the cops arrive, so the clearer your path, the better. Using voxels with physics properties to simulate relatively accurate environments, the destruction of this world is an absolute blast. I'm extremely excited for the full release, but there's still plenty of content to satisfy in the current build of Teardown. Half-Life Alex, rounding out with a VR title, so uh, sorry to disappoint anyone without a headset, the next entry in the Half-Life universe stars Alex Vance, a welcome change of pace. City 17 has never looked better or the future of the series brighter. Featuring some incredibly innovative advances in VR technology, Alex is far and away the most fun I've ever had in VR. It's still an expensive entry on prohibitive hardware, but if you're fortunate enough to have a headset you can use, Alex is a must-have title. An entire review of the game is available above and below if you're interested. And that's all I have. This list is by no means complete, as there are games aplenty that I simply haven't gotten a chance to get to yet. All I can hope is that I reaffirmed your love for some of the games listed here, or introduced you to titles which you may have otherwise missed. What was your favorite game of 2020? Whether it be from a massive studio or single developer, I'm curious which game helped you get through this horror of a year the most. Cheers to 2021 being 
better, literally just any better. It's been rough for everyone, so if you feel like the world is collapsing around you, just know that you aren't alone. We're all in this together, and if it takes burying myself in all kinds of different games to cope until the world is safe once again, then, well, that's what it takes. I hope you all stay safe and enjoy yourself to the best of your ability. Thank you all so much for another year of watching, supporting, and all the love, and if at all possible, take it easy.